previously on Chaser. Who are you, Chico? I ain't seen you here before. For the last few hours, I've been called Chaser. Same name as the guy on TV. So, Tommy wasn't born, Mr. Chaser in person. This isn't happening. Follow me. Glad you're okay, Mr. Chaser. Welcome to the family. Make yourself at home. From now on, you gotta be damn careful. The spider has something like a switch. If you try to go against Valero, or commit some other hot-blooded stupidity, he can blast you. What should I do according to you? The point is to keep quiet and do whatever they want from you. After a few successful jobs, they'll leave you in peace. Then there'll be time to get rid of the spider and Vamoose out of the city. And now get up, Chico, and follow me. They're expecting us in the kitchen. Sit down and listen. We got a message that the Japs contacted somebody from the islands. Somebody they call Big Dragon. His presence in Montax City can imbalance the scale to our disadvantage. This building is our target. From the third floor of this barrack, you have a wonderful view of the flat where the Japs will meet the man from the islands. The good news is that they're just removing debris from the falling Majestic. The bad news is that it belongs to Yakutsa. Repair work is going on around the clock, workers are there by night, and even worse, there is security. This is a big problem. If they find out they're wired, the whole mission will bust wide open. It's got to be done without a single shot. Mr. Chaser will sneak in and by means of this facility find out what Agawa is preparing. How do I get inside and how can I orient myself afterwards? Our building plans were supplied by the main engineer of the construction company that's doing the repairs. Gomez will be in the car, monitoring the position of your spider on the computer and will guide you if you need it. Can my exact position be monitored using the spider? Only for a short distance. The spider's signal isn't strong enough for us to locate you in HQ during the whole mission, which is why I gotta come with you. But a signal for your spider to explode? I can send all the way to Alaska. Got that? So if you have no further questions, then go. Okay, here we are. Do you see the house? That one with the scaffolding next to it? Yeah, I see it. That's your target. The actual meeting will take place in apartment 35 in the opposite building, which means the best place for wiring the two will be the bathroom or Ogawa's workroom on the second floor. Don't make any noise and watch out that nobody spots you. You copy? I'm not deaf. I hope not. We didn't find out how many security cameras are in the house, but we know they're not infra. So you'll be able to play hide and go seek in the dark if you have to. There should be four security guys, but if my guess is right, two of them are slackers. The other two will be at the house. I assume the only route is through the side entrance around the two slackers. Yeah, that's right. I don't think they'll be leaving the main entrance open during the night. I'll see you on the locator. Once you get close to the door from the other side, I'll distract their attention. Okay. If you get lost inside the building, I'll call you and give you directions. So you got all the necessary information. Now it's up to you. Oh yeah, and one more thing. If I hear any alarm, any shooting, or you get more than 300 meters away from me, you got three seconds to pray. You're a funny guy. A real barrel of laughs. Just remember what I'm telling you. Welcome back to Chaser. Before we begin, there's a few things I'd like to show you. 
First up we look inside the casino slash bar and take a look at the news reports. And needless to say the destruction of Majestic and the devastation of Montag City appears to be top on the agenda. Next we have a look at the spider implantation room and this particular screen that the scientist pushes, well there's something special about that. This screen is recycled from the very first introduction cutscene when Chaser woke up um, on the hospital table. The first thing you'll notice is that the face is someone we don't know, but in fact it is actually Chaser, although it is a, an early representation of how Chaser looked in concept art and that sort of thing. I can only imagine that at some point Cauldron decided to change how Chaser looked because to be honest he did look a little silly having two weird little head crab type extension things for hair. Of course it looks like some things appear to have been missed when this character change occurred, namely this texture. But it's not the only thing, the multiplayer icon for the Chaser character is actually using the old concept face as well. The other interesting thing about this image is the text on the left. It appears to have been lifted from the game design document for Chaser. In fact, um, the top section you will find in the summary for the game itself on, on places like Metacritic and things like that. I think the text was initially used as some sort of um, dummy placeholder that never got changed. You'll find it in a couple of other um, uh, copied and pasted images later on in, into the game. And uh, I believe that Joe Wood ended up just extracting the same piece of uh, text from the game design document for uh, the summary of the game without having to um, do any work in rewording it themselves. The final thing I'll be pointing out can be found in the briefing room which we just left. In front of the guy giving us the mission he's got a little black screen with some green text flowing past it. That ends up actually being a snippet of code and if I were a betting man I would say that it was a snippet of code taken directly from the batch renderer for the uh, rendering system of the game. For me the main giveaways being function calls to get vertex count and get triangle count and um, all sorts of mentions of buffers and buffer positions. And now with that part over we can get back to the mission. The first thing to point out is that we start almost within spitting distance of the door we have to go into. However, if we walk down in this direction, we'll end up getting spotted by two guards standing just outside the doorway, so we need to find a different way to get in. As it turns out, the only thing that we can do is uh, go around the other side of the building, which means just running around this way. This is another level where we start off without any weapons, and it's, um, it's not going to be the last, but it's certainly the most forced stealth level that we're going to have to play. The, this one if we get spotted by anyone anywhere we lose the mission and in a very unique way which um, you end up seeing an awful lot if you don't play by the rules. Be ready for my signal to run inside Chico. What was that? I don't know. I'll take a look. You stay here. Now Chico, go for it. Okay, I'm inside. Great, take the door to your left. We've got ourselves some night vision for this level. Okay. I hear a lock opening. Quick, find a dark corner and make like a mouse. Good. Once we get our way inside, it very quickly becomes clear that the name of the game is to follow everything that Gomez says. Any deviations from that will no doubt result in repercussions. Use the door that's left of the stairs. The red light tells us that this camera, thankfully, is inactive. Okay. And these boxes are made by the developer in their home country. That's nice. The first time I played this level, I actually really enjoyed it. Um, I, I played stealth okay, games before, but that was generally where you had to explore and find your own way around guards and things like that. It was never actually holding your hand at all throughout the entire process, but there was something very liberating about doing that, where all you had to do was to follow the instructions and you would come out fine in the end. Okay. 
Now go right, and then to the second door on the left. Walk to the end of the long corridor. Watch out for the camera. That little beep tells you that a camera can see you, and it's something you need to pay attention for. Now left. I've run out of paint. I have to go down to storage. What is it? What are you waiting for? We don't got the whole night for this. In a few minutes, the jig will be up. I can't do anything. There's a couple of painters here. Okay, I'm on the main stairs. Good man. Go up the stairs. And there, it looks like there's a stain there. Paint it properly. Okay, Chief. It'll be perfectly done. Just have a little patience. Shut up. Get back to work. Now down the corridor, right to the end. You're going the wrong way. Get back. Unfortunately, the bad part about this kind of gameplay is that if you um, get lost or turned around and miss an instruction, then you're pretty much fucked because you, you, there's no way you can recover. All you have to do is blindly try doors and hope that you get an instruction that is helpful in okay. some way, usually telling you to turn back, but sometimes it'll the, the game will just kill you instead. a guard from security. Well, don't wake him up. Left to the end of the corridor. Move, we're almost there. Good. Now in and right. In position. We're lucky. We just managed it. So, Balkawa san you wanted to talk to us. Oh, we need our help. A few years ago, the whole city was at our feet. We controlled the police, the mayor, and even the senate. Our business was going well. Montag City was booming, and it was truly a jewel of the north. The percentage of our taxes transferred to the islands was the basis for the current immense power of the Big Dragon. The Big Dragon does not forget, Okawa-san. Yes, thank you. Five years ago, after the big fire, all our power vanished in smoke from the ruins of little Tokyo. Overnight, we lost practically everything we had been building for years. The entire district was reduced to ashes. And then, we were on our knees and pressed under the earth. Hector Valero emerged here and took over most of our activities. I believe that it was he and his people who were behind the fire. Are you not overestimating Valero's power? The fire started in dozens of places at the same time. It was hell. Firestorms in the streets. Hundreds of people simply evaporated. I survived an earthquake in Los Angeles in 2145 when the we're whole city They're leaving the room. into the sea. I can't this locate them from worse. here. Get to the workroom. I'll navigate you from there. Go back to the corridor via the room. Go left to the end and then via the big door. I'd just like to point out that the businessman across the street um, claims to have survived an earthquake in 2145. Well, that certainly can't be the case since the current date is 2044. And now we reach the infuriating part of the level. Hey! Sorry. Goodbye, Chico. And what happened there? Well, the guy that came out of the door saw us. Although he only briefly glimpsed us, it was enough to signal an alarm or script condition where we had been spotted. So, Gomez 
did the only thing he could do, which was to kill us, setting off the explosive device in the back of our neck. Every time that Gomez does this, he always says the exact same thing. Sorry. Goodbye, Chico. And to add some insult to that injury, the subtitles for it are also misspelt. Um, this is the one thing you see more of than anything else in the game, and I'd even considered naming the thread after it. In this example, the guy didn't see me at all, but as you'll see... Sorry. Goodbye, Chico. It seems that the solution is simply to get inside that room before the the AI guy gets to a certain place. Um, if you wait too long then he somehow magically sees you and then you die. If you go too early then he'll see you anyway. Um, yeah, it's it's not a very good section at all. Okay. You don't believe the Martian Connection Theory, do you? I do not know what I should believe. How else could he deprive the big dragon of his city overnight? And now John Chaser reputedly works for him. Chaser? But he on the other side. This contradict whole theory of Martian Connection. I'd rather suspect Stone or Thornton. Chaser, get out of there. They've located you. Valero? I thought this was Mike's frequency. It was. Get out of there. The cops will be on top of you any minute. Don't force me to use the spider. Get out. Chaser, you can't leave the building the way you came in. I can see people from Ogawa security returning to the building. Terrific. Calm down. There's an open window in the room next to the bathroom. I can see it from here. What, are you kidding? You want me to jump from the window? That's right. Just underneath it is some scaffolding that used to climb down. Good. And so the mission has been brought to a very abrupt end. We need to get out of the building as quick as we can. Um, there's actually really no time limit at all. You can take as long as you like. There's just one specific place you have to go. And um, that's kind of it. It seems that the entire purpose of this level is simply to, well, give you some backstory really. Some of the information given in the second segment there by the uh, two Japanese men is particularly interesting in regards to the plot. And I'll see you next time. transmitter. I don't know. All of a sudden, Valero was on your frequency and told me to get the hell out. And just when the Japs were starting to come out with some interesting dirt on him... So it really stinks, eh, Chico? Did you pick up any info? Yeah. Ogawa said that Valero had something to do with some Martian connection. Do you know what that is? Martian connection? <laughs> a couple of guys believe that the Mars Corps Company, or its president, the Honorable Mr. Longwood, is the capo to 2D capo of several large criminal organizations here on Earth. He has been funding illegal projects of the company from their profits. Illegal projects? It's a conspiracy theory. There's a rumor that the company has been holding back on the terraformation of Mars so the money can flow into other illegal projects. Under the table, Mars Corps is supposedly doing experiments on people, clones, on alterations to the human mind. A huge amount of money is needed for all this, and the fight against Castor and his rebels is not free of charge. But you know something about that. About Castor? Sorry, Chico. I keep forgetting about your memory. Commander Castor and his militant band, the New Age Messiah, fighting for the freedom of Mars.
Chaser. Chaser. Chaser? Chaser? Did anything happen? I don't know. I had some visions. What do you mean, visions? You been doing drugs, Chico? If Valero finds out you're using, he'll put you on ice. No, no, I'm clean. The first one happened when they were stuffing this spider in my head. I saw a man in black, a commander of some squad before the action. I think it was Stone. The guy the two Japs mentioned. Could be something from my past. Memories. I don't know, Chico. I'll ask a couple of people what they think about it and let you know. But stay out of Valero's sight so he doesn't catch you when you pass out next time. Next time on Chaser. Stuck